Welcome to Simplify Pharma. In this lecture, we will learn about basic concepts in pharmacy that are essential from D farm to M farm. Students who are studying pharmacy, they should be aware of these concepts, be it pharmaceutical analysis or pharmaceutics. These concepts, they help further in research. So if these concepts are not clear, it will be very difficult to carry out any research work in your B farm and M farm. So let's start with these concepts. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. So we will study in this lecture concepts of spiking, average, mean, standard deviation and relative standard deviation. So now let us see what is spiking. Spiking is also called as spike and recovery. A known amount of analyte is added into the natural test sample matrix. Whenever we purposefully add a known amount of analyte into any sample, it is called as spiking. Then its response is measured in the assay by comparison to an identical spike in the standard diluent. Very confusing, very complicated. So let us now simplify it further. Two things we have to understand that spike recovery test is one of the ways for evaluating the accuracy of analytical method. This is a reason we should know what is spike recovery test. It is generally applied in validation of analytical method for pharmaceutical and biological samples. Let us try and understand spiking in more detail by taking a simple example. Now over here, we are generating a spiked sample that is also called as matrix spike and how it is generated by adding a known amount of analyte to a sample, adding a known amount of analyte to a sample and what we achieve is a spiked sample. Then after that, testing the spike sample, the spike sample is tested and the results is the results they are analyzed and why are they analyzed to determine if we have recovered the amount that we added first of all we have to understand why it is called a spiked sample because this is intentionally we are adding a known amount of analyte to the sample this is the reason it is called a spiked sample for example the concentration of this sample is uh, like one milligram per ml the drug concentration that is there in the sample. Now, if we add some known amount of analyte to the sample, for example, we have added five milligram of this analyte to the sample. And after testing the results that we obtained, we have to determine if in, uh, after doing calculation or, and analyzing the results, is the result showing that analyte five milligram of analyte is present in the sample? or is it showing 4 milligram of analyte or is it showing 6 milligram of analyte if through this result the result analysis it shows that 5 milligram of analyte is present in the sample that means the method that we are using for testing and analyzing the sample is accurate this is the reason we spike any sample so in other words, can we say that metric spike test, it helps to answer the questions like, are we getting good results when we use this method to test this sample or this type of sample? And a good metric spike result, it increases our confidence because then we can say that the method is accurate. How spiking is done? Two portions of sample, two portions of sample, they are prepared for testing. In the metric spike portion, we add a known amount of standard to increase the concentration by a known amount. Then we test both the samples and uh, by testing and analyzing the result, we have to determine whether the spiked sample, it is showing presence of analyte. Now this can be easily understood by this example. We are taking two samples, one sample that is not spiked, it is directly tested and analyzed. And the same sample is prepared and known amount of analyte is added to the sample. That's why it is called a spike sample. And then it is tested and analyzed using the same method. So 
whatever results we are getting for example we are getting x as the amount of drug that is present in the sample then in this spike sample after analysis it should be x plus concentration of analyte so if the spike sample on analysis is showing presence of analyte that we have added for example 5 milligram of analyte if we have added and the results they are showing that 5 milligram of analyte is present in the spike sample that means the method that we are using it is accurate so this is how we validate a method coming to the next concept that is average we all have studied in maths what is average we'll just revise the concept again average is defined as sum of all the numbers divided by total number of values for example uh, we have to determine average of 2 3 3 5 7 and 10 so how will we determine this uh, 2 3 3 5 7 10 these are the values and how many values are there there are six values first of all we'll determine the sum of all these values that is 30 that is divided by the number of values there are six values so 30 divided by 6 is 5 so this is the average of this observation so how is average determined by this formula sum of all observations divided by total number of observations the next concept mean mean is defined as mathematical average of the set of two or more data values mean is determined similar fashion how we determine average for example again we are taking this set of numbers and we determine their sum and how many values are there there are six values so 30 divided by 6 that is 5 so mean number is 5 so the way we determine average similar manner we determine mean there are certain differences between average and mean but that is not required in the scope of a subject we just need to uh, understand these concepts coming to the next concept standard deviation the standard deviation is the average amount of variability in a data set it is a measure of amount of variation or dispersion of a set of values it indicates a typical deviation from the mean it tells you on average how far each value lies from the mean a high standard deviation means that values are generally far from the mean a low standard deviation indicates that values are closer to the mean we can see from this figure uh, it tells you on average how far each value lies from the mean a high standard deviation means that values are generally far from the mean and low standard deviation it indicate that values are closer to the mean then there is one more concept that is relative standard deviation it shows the spread of data in percentage so how it is calculated standard deviation divided by mean into 100 so this we get the relative standard deviation it is a special type of standard deviation and the formula it helps us to understand whether the standard deviation is small or large when compared to the mean for the set of data for example if the standard deviation is 0.1 and mean is 2.5 the relative standard deviation for this set of numbers is 100 into 0.1 divided by 2.5 that is standard deviation divided by mean into 100 it is coming 4% so over here standard deviation is 4% of the mean of 2.5 which is very small so we can say that the data points they are lying closer to the mean on the other hand if this value was very large say 56% then we would have said that the data is more spread out that the values are not closer to the mean in fact they are very far from the mean so this is one case study where in we are trying to understand all the concepts together for example uh, for the recovery study using spike samples so over here we are calculating recovery percentage for each level of spike concentration with respect to unspiked sample we can see over here the unspiked concentration we are taking uh, this is the sample 
wherein we are going to spike it with the lowest concentration and spike it with the highest concentration so uh, this is the sample with the drug we can see the similar values are there then we are going to spike it with a known amount of analyte that is low concentration of analyte and spike it with a high concentration of analyte then what we achieve is obviously it should be a plus b because we are adding this to this sample so this is the expected concentration and then spike concentration that uh, on testing and analysis analyzing the result what we have obtained this is that data so how are we going to determine what is the percentage recovery that is d divided by c into 100 that is the value that we have obtained via result uh, uh, testing and result analyzing the results divided by the theoretical value practical value divided by theoretical value into 100 so this we have obtained in this case 83.22 percent is the percent recovery and in this case 91.31 percent is the percent recovery then we have determined their mean so we have to add both these values divided by 2 we'll get the mean and then we have determined their standard deviation so this is how we use in all these concepts in pharmaceutical research work so in this slide the same case study i have tried to explain more in detail what is a what is b what is c and d and how to calculate e and then how to calculate percent recovery in this case these are the references in our next video i'll try to put a video on how to use excel to determine all these concepts of um, average mean standard deviation which is very very important for pharmaceutical students they should know how to use excel to determine all these values which will be very easy because no longer we are in 11th and 12th standard where we are using formulas to determine all these values that is pretty much time consuming so we have to understand excel so in my next video i will be putting a video on how to use excel to determine all these values thank you for watching my video do like and subscribe and keep sharing so that more and more people can benefit from these videos thank you